Hmm. Do statins uh, have any impact on on hormones in the body? They do. Um, so statins are HMG C-way reductase inhibitors. There's two main classes, ones that like water and ones that don't. So uh, lipophilic and hydrophilic. So depending on their relative lipophilicity or hydrophilicity, because there's a spectrum. So some are like more fat soluble, some are more water soluble. They will penetrate different tissues. But in general, people on statins have a total testosterone of 10 nanograms per deciliter less. So if their starting testosterone was 700, on a statin, it would be about 690. It's not really a clinically significant effect. However, what can be clinically significant is if they have any sort of tendinopathy. For example, there's 12 case studies on statins for bilateral quadriceps tendon rupture. But other uh, lipid medications have tendon rupture risk as well. And if you have high cholesterol, regardless of why, at baseline, you're at risk of tendinopathy and tendon rupture, even if you do not take any medication. Hmm. Um, so if you get sore muscles or sore joints or sore tendons, that can negatively affect your quality of life. But if you have a very high ApoB, then um, it's a conversation that it's reasonable to have. Um, most people that are wondering if they should be on a statin should think about the fiber that they're getting in their diet and um, ideally improve the fiber in their diet before starting supplements. I am a fan of psyllium and similar kind of synergistic blends of fiber that can be beneficial. And then there's also cholesterol absorption inhibitors, which actually increase the amount of cholesterol synthesis in your body, but decrease the absorption. And there is some genetic variation with this, but those also have uh, arguably a much better safety profile than a lot of other lipid lowering medication. And what about PCSK9 inhibitors? Also associated with tendinopathy. Hmm. Um, there is no good evidence if PCSK9 inhibitors uh, and inclycerin, which is basically a PCSK9 inhibitor, it just prevents the protein from going in rather than blocking it. Um, there's no good evidence regarding how they affect vitamin K2 status. We know that statins will deplete K2 or CoQ10 status. But I check both of those things in the patients that I see. And the patients I have on Repatha, Preluent, or um, Lecvio, which is inclycerin, um, I have noticed a common theme of decreasing K2 and CoQ10 statuses. Mm. So I think when they add that as a secondary outcome and kind of the um, continued study, we'll find out that they deplete those things as well. So what's your what's your um, method of assessing cardiovascular risk? And if somebody has, you know, for example, high ApoB, do you do you, I mean, intervene at that point, or do you look at other biomarkers to to you know get a, yeah. a, a fuller, a more full picture of risk? Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I don't care as much about what their ApoB or what their lipoprotein status is or what their cholesterol status is. Um, I care if they have coronary plaque, carotid plaque, microvascular ischemic plaque, um, or peripheral artery disease. It's so like plaque in the legs or even leading to the, like the penile artery, for example. So I don't want them to have plaque anywhere, but the most important places to look at plaque are the carotids and the coronaries. So at some age, usually around 40, I think it's reasonable to get a baseline CCTA. 40, you're so young that you're, if you do a calcium score, you're not going to have any plaque. It just hasn't had time to calcify. But if you get a CCTA and use one of the analysis service like heart flow plaque analysis or clearly, C-L-E-E-R-L-Y, then you can see if you have any soft invisible plaque and then you can check progression to, to see what I'm doing now is preventing or not preventing clinically significant plaque from building up in the coronaries. Mm -hmm. Even newborn babies have tiny bits of plaque called atherosclerotic streaks that are kind of inside the artery, but haven't gone outside that endothelial um, lining. So why would newborn babies have that? It's a good question. Some people think that there is a benefit for helping with blood clotting. For example, that's why we think uh, that's pr the proposed benefit of lipoprotein little a, which is also associated with plaque. Um, so on chromosome six, it's just genetic abnormality. Perhaps less people died of postpartum hemorrhage if they had plaque slightly earlier. Um, but uh, another thing to think about is the human lifespan is relatively long now than in the past. Hmm. So the average chimpanzee 
and the average bear both have sky high lipoproteins, really high ApoB, really high LDL, but they only live to about 15 years on average. So mm. if humans only live to 15 years on average, um, again, uh, we're organic machines. It is long enough to reproduce. And if you can have several children, then natural selection will reward that. But if you die in postpartum hemorrhage, which 1% of females used to before we had modern um, like management of active management of postpartum hemorrhage, then um, that will lower your fecundity rate, which is basically your reprodu exponential reproduction rate quite a bit. Wow. Super interesting. So the fact, the fact that we're now living so long gives the, you know, it's the, 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 the plaque accumulation and, you know, athro atherosclerotic heart disease doesn't interfere with reproduction, but now as a function of living longer, you know, it's almost inevitable to some degree that people accumulate. Is that not, is yes, that not the, it's true? A, it's inevitable that you'll have some plaque, whether it's clinically significant is debatable or not. So some, most people have little specks of plaque even in their 40s if they uh, analyze it with one of these AI-based algorithms like HeartFlow or Clearly. But there is some people that just don't have any plaque outside the artery whatsoever. Eventually they will. But there is a very strong correlation between if there's plaque in your carotid. So some people have had um, like a, a carotid ultrasound or uh, other assessments like an angiogram, um, CT angiogram of the neck, and they don't see any plaque. Um, and they're very unlikely to have a clinically significant amount in the coronaries. Mm. But the safest thing to do is um, check that at multiple points to see if it's progressing. Hey, if you liked that video, you need to check out this one here, and I'll see you there.